So, are the Muppets still a thing or what? After their show on ABC was cancelled in March of 2016, they just stopped being in the media. It didn't even take them that long. The Muppets in 2011 was a critical and financial success that put them back on the map, but after Muppets Most Wanted received mixed reviews and their show on ABC was cancelled after one season, they just fell off the face of the earth again. But I can definitely understand Disney for not making more Muppet productions considering they had to make way for the new Star Wars movies which would have been perfect for the Jim Henson workshop, but CGI equals more money and less realistic interaction between characters. But maybe a special edition of the film will have more to offer for the Muppets. I just hope that the new Star Wars craze doesn't put them back on hiatus for too long, or else it'll be like the Dark Ages for the Muppets from back in the 2000s. After the release of Muppets from Space, critics claimed that the Muppets were starting to lose their charm, and it was the last Muppet film with a theatrical release for 12 years. But in that time, there was one straight-to-video movie and two made-for-TV movies. But the only one a fair majority of people know about is It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie, which is way too long of a title for me to care. I haven't seen it, but by the trailers, it's just another one of the million clones of It's a Wonderful Life, so I'm probably not missing much. There was also a Muppets Wizard of Oz, and other than having the Muppets as main characters from the story, the main difference was that the human cast was predominantly black, and this one starred Ashanti, Queen Latifah, David Allen Grier, and Quentin Tarantino. Huh. Morphing. Morphing? Morphing. Crazy morphing. We're talking Piggy transforming into Gonzo, mutating into Scooter, Scooter turning into a big, busty vampire vixen who explodes in a sea of crimson blood. Someone remind me to take some morphine the next time I want to watch Muppets Wizard of Oz. <laughs> but the very first film of this unofficial trilogy was Kermit's Swamp Years, a made-for-TV movie about a 12-year-old Kermit growing up in the swamp. The premise is that Kermit and his best friend Croker have to go outside the swamp for the first time to save their friends after being taken away by a pet store clerk and eventually by an evil high school professor who wants to DISSECT THEM FOR CLASS. A little risque for a Muppet movie, wouldn't you think? I mean, yeah, a tycoon wanted to eat Kermit's legs at one point, but you know what, Gargamel wanted to eat the Smurfs, he didn't want to cut them open with a sharp knife. I don't know why this movie needs to exist, because the Muppet movie from 1979 was a good prequel showing how all the Muppets came to have the Muppet Show. So, what does this film bring to the table? Unless this Disney-owned production talks about Kermit's time after the Keyblade War and his connection with Sora, there isn't much to relay. But Jim Henson would be ashamed. What's going on? Literally all this film does different is show how Kermit knows about humans. Which, I guess, isn't a terrible idea, but the creators could have been courteous enough to at least show Kermit learning how to play his banjo. You know, his signature instrument. Come on, Jim Henson's workshop, treat your mascot with a little more respect, would ya? In X-Men Origins Wolverine, you at least saw how Wolverine got his adamantium claws. You know, his trademark weapon. But not Kermit's trademark instrument in this prequel all about him. <laughs> that would just be plain smart. Well, the premise is already down the toilet, so let's look at the comedy. Let's watch this movie's first attempt at humor and see how it plays out. Oh, come on, it's fun. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> ah, help, I'm drowning. My whole life is flashing before my big, bulgy eyes. All right, excuse me, goggles. Goggles. The water's only three inches deep. Oh, hey. That is not funny. A lot of the jokes in this movie are either immature or don't make any sense. Take this scene, for example, when the professor is talking to his assistant. You don't want to be an assistant scientist forever, do you? You want to be a real scientist like me. Yes. Ever since I saw The Wizard of Oz as a kid, I wanted to be a scientist. What does The Wizard of Oz have to do with science? I don't know, but probably the same reason Quentin Tarantino was in a Muppet movie. This movie goes as far as to give Goggles... By the way, I forgot to mention that the two frogs that got captured names are Goggles and Blotch, so let's just forget that I fucked up and move on. So this movie goes as far as to give Goggles not one, but two ass shots, because this movie is a bunch of toadstool... Get it? <laughs> Whatever. 
As for the characters, they all have their basic traits and not much else. Croker is a daredevil with a really high hop, and that's it. Goggles is a whiny scaredy cat much like Chucky from Rugrats, and that's it. And Blotch is your stereotypical bully, and that's it. Eventually, Kermit runs into a dog named Pilgrim, voiced by Cree Summer, and she's definitely the best actor in the whole movie. I mean, yeah, she's just mainly a dog, and that's it, and is excited by all dog stuff like squeak toys and throwing sticks, but she gives it enough energy to make it a good casting choice, even if all I hear is number five. I wouldn't exactly count her as a guest star, though, because this movie doesn't have any. In fact, out of the five human characters listed on the Wikipedia page, only two of them have existing pages, the other being the evil professor, played by John Hossetter, if I'm pronouncing that right, who's actually done some voice work for a few Studio Ghibli films. Go run the hoist while I fix this! Huh? You think you can do it? Yeah! And if you've seen Castle in the Sky, remember to never fuck with Boss. His assistant and the pet store clerk are both just quirky people disguised as idiots. Like, I don't know everything about animals, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't see good results from putting the frogs in a snake tank. Well, at least not good for the frogs. Hmm. Must be my lucky day. Is he gonna rape them? The movie has a recurring theme of following your star, which I guess means finding your purpose in life, because I guess this film is deep. But in the end, they sing a song about following your star, but that there's no place like home. So more Wizard of Oz references to confuse me. Well, you know what? Fine. If this movie can do it, then so can I. And now we know, wherever we roam, we'll never find a place like home. I want to be a witch! <laughs> There's also a really lame plot thread about Croker losing his ability to hop, and it's not lame by how it sounds, but of how it's executed. The scene begins with Croker getting run over by a truck, again, a little risque for Muppets, but it is funny to see one of them be a victim of vehicular manslaughter because I'm a twisted fuck. He then tries to track down the truck by hopping, but he can't, and in a later scene they have to use his hop to reach a high window, and he says he can't do it because he doesn't believe in himself. But after Kermit gives him some confidence, he gets his hop back and reaches the window. Self-confidence is a good message, but it doesn't seem to make sense because he didn't lose hope when he first tried to hop, he just couldn't hop for some reason. It's really inconsistent and kind of ruins the message. And get ready for a universal mindfuck because there's a scene where Kermit falls and is helped up by a young Jim Henson, which makes no sense at all! How the hell is it possible for Kermit to come in contact with Jim Henson before the idea of him even came to his mind? Does this movie take place in one of those Rick and Morty infinite universes where literally anything is possible? Or am I just overthinking it? Well, that's retarded. By the way, doesn't this kid look like Arya from Game of Thrones a little bit in the face? I don't even have a joke for this, just something I wanted to point out. But I do have a joke for this scene. <laughs> what was that? Uh, that's called a pig. A pig, huh? I hope I never see another one of those my entire life. Oh, don't act so sure, Kermit, because in a few years you'll be fucking one. Oh, yeah! Also, I can forgive this film for not having any guest stars because it's not mandatory for every Muppet film to have them, other than a small cameo from Statler and Waldorf, but the film couldn't afford any good camera work either. A lot of the shots in this film seem like there wasn't much effort put into them, and most of them don't even look in focus. Other times, the camera's just way too shaky and it's really hard to tell what's happening on screen, like, are we in a different place? now? Is this thing still going on? What the hell's happening? In conclusion! This just seems like a last minute project they did, like right after they finished shooting the Christmas movie, they decided to put this one together with as little crew as possible and with little care and delicacy as possible. This aired in September 2002, almost three whole months before the Christmas special aired in November, so if the Christmas special was a way to get the Muppets on the map again, this movie coming before it would kind of turn people off to the idea that the Muppets would have a good future even when owned by Disney. And even nowadays, other Disney icons like Tinkerbell are doing way better with her movies, even without all the bad girl Walmart merchandise. I'm at least happy that they surprised audiences because their last two movies did surprisingly well, and yeah, Disney is a little preoccupied right now with Star Wars and Marvel, but I'd say just give them some time and the Muppets will be back with another hit soon enough. Now, can we end this video on a cheap frog joke? Try showing some more leg, Ed! Huh? Perfect.